Okay, it's recording. All right. Hello, America. This is the news. No, this is actually, I'm Bob Mahalko, and this is... Harvey Horton. And we're part of the Akron Society of Professional Photographers up in Akron, Ohio. Actually, we're in Wadsworth, Ohio right now, but we are all over the Northeast Ohio area. And we wanted to just, we're, we're starting something new, and it's called... ASPPTV. That's a lot of letters, and it's kind of funny. Um, so anyway, we're going to be doing some little video clips. Uh, we're just coming out of our Monday, June 15th meeting tonight. In a few minutes, you're going to see a little interview we did with our speaker, Jim Cunningham. Jim came all the way up from Little Rock, Arkansas to Northeast Ohio tonight and put on an amazing, amazing Photoshop program about imagescapes and putting in um, backgrounds, digital backgrounds, um, and making your images look real and how to extract them and everything. So those of you that were able to make it here tonight, um, Thank you for coming. I think you had a good time. And those of you missed, we're going to have just a little highlights of some of the things we talked about tonight here in the following video. Well, thanks for watching. Um, we're signing off. All right. Take care. We'll see you soon. And here's, here comes the interview with Jim. All right. Welcome, everybody. We are here with a new episode of ASPP TV. That's right, we're getting corny, but we're having a good time. We just had a great night here with uh, Jim Cunningham from Imagescapes and Cunningham Photography down in Little Rock, Arkansas. Jim, thank you so much for coming. And man, it was my pleasure to be here, absolutely. So, we, we so appreciate you coming up and bringing your knowledge. What I wanted to ask you is if you had any um, last, you know, highlights that you wanted to touch base on, maybe go over those settings for the... Um, Extraction, the refine edge settings. Yeah, the people. Like that, you think I have those memorized or something? Of course you do. That's why there's that little check mark box down in the bottom that says "Remember settings." Well, there you go. I'm sorry. About that's that. why I also have them on my phone so I can pull them up in case somebody asks me. So. I'm gonna ask my lovely assistant to bring my clipboard over, and I'll just see if my notes. Well, actually, yours. I can access right here. Let me pull my phone out. There we go. Even better. And, um, and while he's doing that, I'll, uh, I'll just fill time with awkward silence. No. Um, well, I can give a plug for Evernote because that's what I use. To, to, Evernote is an awesome little program that gives you the ability to save anything online. It's free. You're allowed only a certain amount every, every month, but I've never exceeded that. And uh, you can pull up. Uh, you can save anything to it. It's kind of become my memory. And there's an app for the phone. You can have it on your computer or just access it online. That's Evernote? Evernote. Evernote. Evernote.com. Evernote.com? Evernote or no, they your don't pay Apple me. Store. You could go to Evernote and the Apple App Store. Probably has a job. Okay. There. Refine Edge. Uh, once you've made your initial selection, uh, making sure that you don't get any areas that you can see through, like hair or tool on this dancer's dress that you did tonight. Um, the edge definition, uh, you want smart radius check. You want uh, a radius of 2.5. You Then you go to the adjust edge section and you want smooth to be set at 3. You want feather to be 0 0.5 pixels, half a pixel. What okay. was it, 3? Three? 3. 3. I had a couple okay. tall surgery. I can't make the Boy Scout sign anymore. <laughs> um, contrast is also at Three. Three. Oh, there we go. Go through that. And uh, shift edge is at minus 12. Minus 12. And that's important because what the shift edge is, it brings that in so you don't right. get that awkward and red Actually, line. once you've made uh, your refine edge, you can actually play with the shift edge and you can see how it pulls in and out uh, the details. So that's, uh, you look at the mask and then you play with shift edge and see what it that's does. Wonderful. But minus 12 is a good starting point. And then you want to output to a new layer with a layer mask. Super. With the layer mask. That's, it's a drop-down menu on the, uh, on the little app up there in your refined edge area. That's right. Super. Super. Well, I really appreciate that little tip. The other is, can you give a quick overview of how you do your drop shadows and the right-clicking on the, sure. the drop shadow mask? The, um, the, drop, the way you make a shadow or the way I make a shadow is you you go to the special effects and you click on drop shadow and that's just like you would add a drop shadow to a text layer and you can then go right over to your image and pull that drop shadow out 
That's the distance. You're, you'll see the distance slider move. And then you want to play with the uh, size of the image uh, to soften the edges of the shadow. And once you've got it looking the way you want it to, then you would hit OK. And that creates a drop shadow. Now, the drop shadow is still married to the image. Okay? The way you can divorce them is... <laughs> Married to the image, divorce and see. Okay. That's us photographers. That's how we get a second wedding out of this That's deal. right. That's right. You know, I tried one time doing a special that they'd get 20% off if they booked their divorce party at the same time they booked their wedding, but so I didn't cool. get any takers for some reason. That's so cool. But anyway, uh, you'd right click on the drop shadow name on the layer, mm -hmm. and you'll get a little drop down list, and down at the bottom it says uh, convert to new layer. And you click on that, and it will take that shadow and put it on a brand new layer underneath your subject. That's wonderful. And then once you have that new layer, you go to free transform, and you hit the control button to be able to play with your... The control stretches. button on a PC, the command button on a Mac, there you go. and then you can grab any of the points and stretch it and move it any way you want to. That's excellent. That is super great. Um, anything else that you would like to recap from the meeting this evening that uh, you think that our viewers would um, would find uh, worthwhile or knowledgeable. But the one thing I want to stress very, very highly is shoot raw and flirt with the highlight side of the histogram. Absolutely. And for those of you that forgot that or left a little bit early, again, he was pointing out to us that on the brighter side of our histogram is where 90% are. Actually, you need to go this, this way. To the right. We're leaning to the right. Well, that's because they <laughs> that's would right. see that as the left, left, left if you go the other way. That's right. We're backwards. We're in a mirror. Um, we're new at this. Stop laughing. Okay. Um, so you're going to go to the right on your histogram because the majority of your two-thirds of your information? A half of your information, half of your information is, is in that, first, in that first section. And if you don't get, you, you and run the chance of adding a lot of noise by underexposing your image. Absolutely. And that, Play with it. Flirt with that right side. Try, you know, turn on your flashing on the back of your camera so that when something's overexposed, it's flashing. And then make sure you always have something flashing in your image. If you, if, you know, if you're doing, black, you know, a black cow on a black background, of course you're not going to get flashing, but, but, um, that's not good, like how about, how about a bat in a cave? A bat in a cave. Bat in a cave, you're not going to get flashing. But um, <clears throat> on something that has some white or some lighter areas or where specular highlights would be, you want that to be flashing. It's not going to be overexposed because as you play with your slider in camera raw, you're going to find out the exposure, it's not overexposed. Super. Excellent. That's, that's really wonderful. One last thing that I have real quick for you before my cameraman wants to hit the button and cut us off. Look at them. They're making the cutoff sign already. That means our time is coming to an end. But tell us a little bit, uh, again, you're from ImageScapes, and what Jim goes around and he travels all over the country and photographs really cool um, backgrounds and things and makes them available to photographers like us. Some of you may have not been able to make it tonight or had to leave early. Um, we had some people that had regrets they couldn't make it. How do you um, go about uh, if somebody wanted to place an order on a background from you that wasn't able to make it tonight, how do they go about contacting you? Well, um, ImageScape, ImageScapesBackgrounds.com. You can Google it or just type that in. And um, I had a special. Uh, I won't go over it on this because it's kind of complicated, but uh, it's a really good deal, a big discount off the price of my backgrounds. If you will contact me through the website and leave your phone number and uh, tell me that you're part of the Akron Professional Photographers Association. I will be more than happy to give you that special. So here's the deal. If you contact him, do you want to have a deadline on that? Um, anytime before the end of the month, end of go. June. Month of June. It is oh, a really that, that is, though, if you'll have this. I'll have it there. up. I'll have it up. <laughs> okay. I'm annoying to people. They know that. Um, they <laughs> now have a face to the annoying guy. Sorry, guys. Um, if you're watching. But the, uh, so June 30th, 2015, um, we'll have this special going. We took, you know, a lot of people took part of it tonight, but some of you may have been like, Bleh. so you have a second chance. So this is, this is unusual, you have a second chance. And if you're sitting on your rubber raft, enjoying a nice soft drink on July 4th weekend, and all of a sudden you go, oh, 
I didn't get hold of Jim. It's double. Call me. <laughs> call me anyway. We'll work it out. Use the keyword Akron. Just put Akron. He'll Akron. know. He'll Same. know because he's a little. But give me a phone number so I can call you. Absolutely. All right, Jim. Thank you so much. Thank you. It's a right. pleasure being here. All right. Well, I know everybody was thrilled to have you. Well, I was thrilled to be here. Excellent. Thank, thank you. you.